Okay, today I'm going to walk you through how I do things with a program called LaserWeb 4. I uh, use it to process my Inkscape uh, SVG files into G code to run on the uh, ERC temp save. So I'll leave a link for the uh, LaserWeb 4 download site. Uh, it is a free program. And I will also leave a link for uh, Gerbil 1.1H-Servo. Uh, that's the Gerbil version I'm running. I, because I also use my machine as a laser, on it. I wanted the latest, greatest uh, version of Gerbil. And this one has been modified to run a servo motor as well. So if you go over to the laser website, uh, just download the program and install it. I won't walk you through that. Um, we'll just launch LaserWeb 4 here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is go into settings. And under here you're going to set up everything. So under machine, you just want to do your mins and maxes. Uh, your, uh, sorry, your maximum width, maximum height of your machine. Uh, these are just numbers I plugged in. Uh, I believe the machines are something like 800 by 750 or something along those lines. Uh, machine X and Y, just leave them at zero. Same with the tool beam. Basically our needle's about 0.2 millimeters in diameter or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the offsets are at zero. Now, one person did ask if uh, it would work with a servo or with a third stepper motor for the z-axis rather than a servo. Yes, you can just enable it right here. Uh, the other stage here, the A stage, is uh, for use with a rotate rotating device for lasers to do laser work on round items. Uh, under file settings, you want uh, 96 is, I what believe, uh, the pixels per inch for the newest versions of Inkscape. Um, G-code, basically leave it on default, that is Gerbil. Uh, the other option is Marlin for use with uh, some CN machine. CNC machines use 3D printer boards and they generally run Marlin. Okay, the G code start should be okay. The G code end, we want to put in M5. That will turn off the servo and retract it. And then we'll tell it to return to the, the zero, 00 point at the end of the job. Tool on will be M3 tool off will be M5. Laser intensity will be set to zero to S, sorry. And what that is, that's critical on this machine because uh, we use the M3S command and uh, to drive the servo motor. So uh, the pulse width mid, sorry, pulse width Minimum value will be zero, maximum will be 100. That will give you your full range of travel on your servo. Under application, you want to set your grid width and grid height to the same dimensions as your machine is. Now, I haven't tried it, but this thing will allow you to use a game pad or a number pad to jog your machine as well. The, they would be plugged into a USB port on whatever computer you're uh, using this, this program on. Okay, so under comms, we're going to select USB. We're going to select whatever one, whichever COM port that your UNO is on. In this case, it's COM9. And the baud rate will be 115,200. And you just tell it to connect. 
that will bring up your machine down here. Uh, this is very much like the console that's with Gerbil control. So if we type in dollar sign, dollar sign down here, same thing, it'll bring up all your parameters, your working parameters for your Gerbil. Now, like I say, this one is 1.1 H-Servo. It's been modified to work with a servo motor, but it will also work with a laser. And one thing you need to have is the dollar sign 32 must be set to, to zero. Uh, if it's in laser mode, which is the one setting for there, um, it varies the laser intensity and the speed of the machine at the same time. So it will drive your uh, servo motor absolutely nuts if it's set to laser mode. So to change it, it's just a matter of typing in this box. We'll go uh, dollar sign $32 equals zero and hit enter. At that point, you can do another dollar sign, dollar sign. We don't need to because it was already in those settings. Uh, same thing, uh, the rest of the parameters are pretty much as uh, the older version of the firmware, the 9.9i. Um, the only other one I changed, the dollar sign $120 and dollar sign $121 were at $30 before. I bumped them up to $40 just to see if I could get a little faster time on my diagonal lines. Uh, if you don't know, a diagonal will slow your machine down by quite a bit because it's got to work both stepper motors at the same time. Um, but uh, yeah, those are the, about the only other settings I did in, in there. Um, the other one I did do, I, it's not turned on on this one, um, to try to minimize skip steps, uh, which one is it? I believe it's dollar sign one. I set to 255. Uh, like I say, it's not done on this one right now. Uh, that will keep your motors locked uh, when they're not traveling. The reason for that is I found that uh, the needle can act as a it, it can cause problems. Uh, it can cause missteps in there. Uh, if you do turn that on, monitor the, the uh, motor temperature. You may have to turn down your pots on your uh, stepper drivers to compensate a little bit. Anyway, uh, we'll walk you through how to process a file now. Okay, so we go up to files. So up here we just tell it to add a document. This is one I had set aside. So this is a simple cub. And it's going to bring it up on the display. So what well, this one uh, is set up for color, various colors. And it's also set up for layers. So I can actually go in here and just do the bombs or just do the fuselage or the spar. Now for some reason it didn't drag over the names of the layers. Uh, they were actually layered as bombs, fuse, and spars, but it just came up with layer 5, 6, and 7 for some reason. Anyway, we'll just work with the full document here. So we'll click on that. So what you end up doing is just drag it down here into this gray box. Now I'm going to do the spar or the um, score cuts first, which were my red. So scores. We'll just name each one of these. We'll select the color, which is red. We will go in here until it's sixty percent, and I'm going to set this to fifteen hundred just so we can get through this a little faster. That's usually far greater than what I normally cut at. I'm usually cutting around 850 to 1,000. Okay, so you don't have to save anything at this point. Your score cuts are done. We drag this back down a second time. And this will be called full cut. 
and you can see the name sh shows up here. And full cut is black. We'll go 90% here. I don't dry, generally use 100 because you may bottom out your servo and cause damage or strip gears. We'll do that at 1500 as well. And there was a third layer on here which is gray. I'm not sure what it is. I haven't gone looking. But uh, we'll just tell it that that's mark. It could be just the alignment marks for the uh, fuselage uh, formers. So we'll tell that to do that at 40, just to be as a demonstration. Okay, so there's our three done. Now, if you did screw up and you did the full cut first or the score, you your order of cuts is wrong, you can just click here on the arrows. That'll move them around. So we'll just drop that guy down. There, we're back in the original order again. Now, if we uncheck the documents box, this will give you your uh, simulation. So you can actually run it. And Oops, we have to generate it first, sorry. So we'll go up here to this orange box and tell it to generate the G-code. Now it's going to generate all three of these processes in the order that you've got them done. So now we can run the simulator. It'll walk you through the, the entire cut. Okay, so we've got that done. Now you can tell it to save your G code. Well, we won't do that first. Well, we can open the G code up and look at it. You can't edit it in this location, but you can view it. Now we can tell it to export to a file. Now, this is where I screwed up on one of them yesterday. Uh, we'll call that cub. Now if you've got that saved at some point, you want to do another one, bang, there it is there, just pull it back in and start your, your cut again. Okay, uh, so if we go under control now, this machine does have a built-in control uh, process. So make sure your needle's in the bottom left-hand corner. I usually will double check just by hitting set zero. Make sure everything is ready to go. Up here will give you a, a visual readout of uh, the process of the job. That's one thing that has to be changed. I forgot about that. So dollar sign, dollar sign. And if we go up to 10, dollar sign 10 in the original parameters, I believe was set to three. If you set it to zero, then these will work. And it will also give you an indication of movement on the document here on the screen as it's cutting. This is already set, so it's just dollar sign 10 equals zero down here and tell it to enter. So at this point, you can also do a check size. What it's going to do is go around and physically do a square around the, the cut area of the object that you're cutting. That'll let you know that it, you're not running off of your stock anywhere. Um, it may cause your servo to chatter or to drop just a little bit, uh, depending on your settings. Uh, normally, with a laser, this would be turned on to like 1%, just to give you a light image on whatever you're, you're copying on t or you're cutting or whatever. So at this point, we're good to go. Uh, just tell it to run. You'll see a the purple dot, it's doing the score cuts first. 
we won't walk through this whole thing. It, you know, it's if you've been running one of these, you you know what it's going to do. So once it's done the score cuts, then I will switch over to the full cuts. Like I say, this is considerably faster than what I would normally run at. But uh, that'll give you an idea. Now we'll just tell it to abort the job. If for some reason, um, like right down here, you want to restart the thing, right now it's locked. Uh, you can tell it to clear the alarm here, or you can type down in here uh, dollar sign $x, and that will also unlock it. So we'll just clear that, and we can tell it to uh, go to 0, 0 position, and it should walk itself back home again. Now my particular machine also has end stops on it, so I can tell it the home uh, right up here. Don't do that if you don't have end stops. In fact, I think it'll just come up and tell you that no end stops are installed. So that's about it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, just fire me off a message on Facebook Mark, uh, Messenger, and uh, I'll see if I can answer your questions. Have a good one.